What's going on guys? Welcome back to season two of my Angel 23 Houston Coyotes franchise mode series. Thank you so much for the support on the first episode. If you wouldn't mind leaving a thumbs up on this one as well, I'd really appreciate it. Obviously guys, we relocated Arizona to Houston. A lot of rumors about that happening in real life. So we made it happen in game. And as you can see here, we're actually currently 6-0 and to start year two. Of course, this is in the preseason, but we'll see if that can kind of carry over. We made a big free agent signing here, Terra Sank, who's over a point per game. And last year too, like I thought for sure, you know, we'd be like one of the bomb five teams in the league. Wasn't the case. We're actually fighting for a playoff spot uh, during most of the year. If you guys missed the last episode, as you can see there, the Boston Bruins won the Stanley Cup. So, you know, pretty realistic, I'd say. Best regular season team ever. It makes sense that they had another crack at it. They could go on a deep playoff run. So, next you guys will show what the lines are looking like for this team. First line there is pretty stacked. Clayton Keller now at 91. Playing with Schmaltz there at 88. Tarasenko 88. And they're getting a plus 5. Krause is down at 87, playing with Hayden 85, Michelli 85 on the second line, getting a plus one. Uh, third line there is Zucker, Stastny, Gunther. Unfortunately, they get a minus one, but I feel like they'll do okay. Fourth line there, we brought in a veteran presence and a pest in Corey Berry, playing with Jack McBain and Christian Fisher. So overall, Ford group definitely, you know, well improved from last year. Um, in terms of the defense, we actually brought back Shane Gosses Bear. So basically, we got a free third down pick there from the Carolina Hurricanes. One year deal, $8 million. So Definitely like, you know, a rental if we're not a playoff position, we're trading him at the deadline for sure. Uh, paired up there with Severson, we're actually seeing, you know, a pretty big part of the team going forward. Sarge from there, of course, our best young defenseman. He's paired up with Graves on the second pair, again, a plus two. We then have Valimaki, Coglin, bottom pair. Coglin actually expected to be an AHL defenseman, but randomly grew to 81, so he got the promotion. Goaltending wise, with Velka still our starter. We got Aiden Hill backing him up. He was actually drafted by the Coyotes. Obviously, he's currently this goalie for the Vegas Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup Finals, so we'll see how we can do here in the sim. Power play-wise, I mean, power play one actually looks pretty nasty. Um, Michelli there has got like 93 passing, very good puck skills. I saw some people saying I should give him like a passing X-Factor, so let me know if you guys want me to do that. I'm thinking I'd probably give him like tape to tape. And now power play two here obviously isn't quite as good, but still pretty solid. I would say this is about on par with last year's power play one, so just going to show you how much better the team got. Uh, the foreman there gets a plus three. Second unit there is the zero. And in regards to the PK, guys, I actually really like our first unit there. Paul Stassi's got the quick draw X factor, 91 face off, solid defensive stats there with ASMD awareness. Barrett Hayden here has the Yoink X factor, 92D awareness. So hopefully those two guys are working well with Graves and Sarstrom here. Graves here's got the shot block and X factor, solid physical. Sarstrom there actually has five star physical, 93 shot block and stick check. So uh, very better defensively than I expected. I think that's just kind of how he grew. So hopefully that first unit can, like I said, shut down all the other teams' top power plays. PK2, PK3 also don't look too bad. Uh, right here, guys, quick look at the three mans. Only uh, the third unit there gets a minus three. Other than that, I would say pretty solid chemistry there for our special teams. Now, in terms of the HL team, they're actually looking very good as well. We got Fabian Lysol we traded for in that first line. Playing with Jenik and Matthew Nice. Nice, of course, we also traded for eventually. He'll be playing with Logan Cooley, his Minnesota teammate. You got Carcona on the second line with Dauphin and McCartney. Kirk, Douglas, and Don on the third line. Don, of course, is Shane Don's son. And the first three, four lines all get plus two, which honestly you don't see much in the AHL. Uh, fourth line there, a couple of enforcers. We got Imama, Landry, and then O'Brien. So I think that's pretty cool for the AHL team. Defensively, JJ Moser's actually down here. So didn't plan on this, but 81 overall. I mean, he's solid, nothing amazing. And just the way it worked out chemistry-wise, Val Mackie Coglin got a plus one, and Moser wasn't able to get a plus one with either. So luckily, he does have one year left on his contract. I'm thinking we'll be able to extend him for cheaper this way. Uh, Yulevi there is paired up with them. Ketcherling, Kuliachonik, Mackie, Brown. They actually get plus three on the bottom pair. Ingram's our starter. Prospetov backing him up. So... Like, overall, I think these teams actually look pretty decent. But with a team like this, it's kind of like in that middle ground where they could make the playoffs, could not. It's really tough to predict. So, we're going to have to wait and see before we start making some bigger moves. Um, in terms of the ratings for this year, we got 92 offense and 90 defense, 83 goaltending. Also, too, if you guys did miss the last episode, right there's look at the home jersey. Uh, again, it's kind of like a mix between the Houston Arrows, light blue and blues, as well as, you know, the orange taking over from the Arizona Coyotes. So, um, overall, you know, pretty happy with how the jerseys turned out, how the team looks. Let's see if the Houston Coyotes make the playoffs in their first ever season. Let's get started. All right, guys, so this always happens. I literally just stopped the sim to show you. We hadn't lost in regulation yet through 11 games. We were 9-0-2, and, and then as I stopped the sim, we lose to the Jets. But still, what an incredible start so far. 9-1-2, and two, like... This team is doing way better than I expected. And so we're now in December here, guys. The record of 25-8-2. I cannot believe how good this team is playing. Did not expect this at all. As I mentioned, I thought like, we'd maybe be a wild card team somewhere in the middle of the league. And not the case. We got 52 points so far. I mean, we're actually currently leading the league in points. The Flames there are one behind us. Like, that is incredible. Nick Schmaltz there, lean scorer. Just over a point per game, 38-35. and 35. AHL-wise, Carcone there's our lean scorer. 
um, AHL teams there. Sixth in their division, 36 points. I actually expected them to do a lot better, but 36 points isn't bad when you look at the rest of the league, so they could still be making the playoffs. I'm definitely going to reevaluate our strategy here, because I was thinking to be a seller at the deadline, but if we're continuing to play this well, definitely like cannot do that. It would just be disrespectful to the boys and the team, so I'll uh, see where we're at you know, in a month and a half here. If we're still competing, we might actually have to load up. And now Vegas just made us a pretty good offer, guys. Kane Korschak for Jason Zucker in a fourth round pick. Um, if we weren't doing well, I think I would definitely take this. Korschak, 22, 73, medium, top four, but... As it stands, you know, we're playing pretty well. Zucker's got 19 points, 39 games, playing third line. I feel like I'll hold on to him. Again, you know, normally I'd probably say yes, but with how the team's playing, we got to project this. And look at this, guys. We're going to offer another really good prospect. Chaz Lucius for Paul Stastny and third and Zucker. Again, rebuilding team, such an easy yes, but we're currently 41, 17, and 2, almost at the deadline. Lucius is a very good prospect. I mean, I would love him on the team in the future. If there's a way to just get him for picks... I don't know why the Jets have him on the block. Look at Clayton Kelly's value there. Logan Cooley's still in 82. People said he wouldn't grow if we didn't sign him. Uh, it's not the case. I don't think signing a prospect has any uh, relation to their growth. Unless they're playing in the NHL and doing well, then obviously uh, they're going to go up for that reason. But like, if you just have them in the AHL, uh, signed or unsigned, does not matter. Now look at the draft picks. we got four picks here. I would definitely give up like Montreal's second and then maybe, I don't know, the Rangers' third there. Two thirds and a second for Lucius. If they say yes, we're stealing them, but whatever. And they do say yes. Yeah, okay, that's awesome. And so now at the deadline, guys, we actually had a really bad loss here. The Sabres, 8-3. I want to show you, too, one of the worst losses I've ever had. 12-2 there to Nashville in January. 10-4 uh, to the Jets. So when we lose, we lose bad. But luckily, we're winning most of the time. As you can see, we're currently sitting with a record of 43-18-2. We are first place in the Central Division with 88 points. And I believe, yes, we're still first place in the NHL. So again, incredible inaugural season here for the Houston Coyotes, at least so far. AHL-wise, 29-24-1 isn't too bad. Again, I did expect them to play a bit better than that, though. Carcone's the leading score there with 40-54. and 54. NHL-wise, Clayton Keller's got 70-63, and 63, so he's popping off. Um, again, we'll get to the deadline, and we're somehow buyers. Season ticket drive, we're already at 75%. I mean, with how the team's playing, I feel like it should be a lot higher than that. Again, we're first place in the NHL. We are a full-blown buyer. There's no reason not to be. Again, this rebuild happened a lot faster than I expected, but... Let's uh, make the most of it here. You got Jared Spurgeon again on the block. Patty Kane, I forgot to show you guys. He actually went to Buffalo, which I thought was pretty cool. We could bring him in as a rental one year. Uh, we'll see how he's playing with the Sabres there. Doughty's on the block. Miller, of course, those are big contracts. Linus Allmark, he actually dropped in rating from 89 to 87. Uh, Claude Giroux there. Anze Kopitar. Chris Letang. Kuzmenko. Kotchikov. I've actually seen him get really good. Four years left at $2 million. What a contract as well. Okay, so... I mean, I didn't want to sign Patty Kane, but seeing the position we're in, if Buffalo's not playing well, which, yeah, they're below 500, 28, 31, and 2. Kane there, he's putting up a lot of points. What is that, like 51 points right now? In an overall playmaker. I feel like it makes sense to make a trade for Kane here. Also, too, guys, Dylan Guthrie's actually up and rating now to 84, so that's good to see. He's got 30 points on the year, playing third line, not bad at all. In terms of Vegemelka, let's see if we need a better starter. 906, 286. Those are pretty decent numbers. They could be better, but uh, they're not terrible. Wow, look at this offer, guys, from the Senators. Close your rune a third for Lucius and Nyes. They're asking for two of our best prospects. That's a hard no. I'm really hoping I can get Patty Kane for a lot cheaper than that. And look at this, guys. I wanted to see which players Buffalo wanted. It's literally just all of our best prospects. Barlow there is now at 71. Geeky, Stan and Blica, Lucius, we just got Nyes, Lysel, Lutz, and Doan. I feel like right there kind of is the core of the future of this team. Goalie-wise, could trade over the medium elite goalie. You uh, usually can draft those pretty easy. Uh, Jeff Petrie, you do not want at 6.2 million, especially for two seconds. But um, what I was going to say is Fisher probably going to trade. I don't think we'll be bringing him back. The first round pick, if we're making the playoffs, give me a late first anyways. I honestly probably would do Arvidsson here because it's going to take a lot for him to grow. And like I said, we're usually pretty good finding those medium league goalies. So at this point, the value is actually on our side. If we can get away here with just a second round pick, again, because we have so many... Um, bet on ourselves, our second, Arvidsson and Fisher for Kane. We could have signed them, but I'm still not, you know, too upset over trading this away. Trades rejected, just a touch though. Okay, so literally could potentially add a seventh round pick here, which we have three of. Again, we're going to bet on ourselves. Trades accepted. So Patty Kane joined the Houston Coyotes. I feel like that's probably enough um, in terms of loading up for this year, but there are some trades I want to make. They're just like hockey trades for the future. Wow. Now look at this offer here, guys. LA Kings want to give us Anze Kopitar in a third for Connor Geeky in a second. As good as we're playing this year, it does not make sense to like mortgage our future on this one season. So 
I'm gonna say no. I feel like we could potentially get the cup without Kopitar, especially after bringing in Patty Kane, but the trade I actually did want to make was for Thomas Bordelow, if you guys don't know. I uh, played for Michigan, was drafted by the San Jose Sharks, and he's actually from Houston, so that's why I want to get him on the team. Uh, he's pretty good too, like he'd definitely be a part of our, you know, future core. 22 years old, already 81 overall, ankle breaker X-Factor, medium toxic potential. Uh, he's got 25 points right now, 64 games with the Sharks, which honestly isn't the best. Uh, you can see though he's got really nice hands, solid shot too. And like I mentioned guys, the main reason why I want him is just because he's from Houston. Another player we could have gotten was actually Tyler Myers, some people suggested, but I feel like our defense is fine and Bordelow's age just kind of makes more sense. So the value there is not crazy. I'm going to see what it would cost. I would definitely be willing to give like, you know, one prospect for another. I'm um, trying to think here who would make the most sense honestly to let go of. Julian Lutz here, 20 years old, 74 overall, medium top six, was actually drafted by the Coyotes, second round 2022. So could move on from him to get Bortolo. Uh, could also just flip Lucius. He does have one extra X Factor there, but uh, just got him from the Jets. Has a bit more value on his own. The value is pretty much spot on. They like Lucius. I would do this for Bortolo. Uh, Bortolo is already higher rated there. Let's see. What do the Sharks say to this one? Trades accepted. All right. I think the value was slightly on our side. So uh, we actually have Bortolo now for the NHL team because he has 81 overalls. And I'm actually going to try to make one more trade for the future, and that's to get Jimmy Snuggerer from the St. Louis Blues. If you guys didn't know, he also played for the University of Minnesota. He was actually on the line with Logan Cooley and Matthew Nye. So we could actually have that entire line. It'd be pretty sick. Uh, he's already 77 overall there at 19 years old. Close quarters X Factor along Unstoppable Force. He's a power forward. Again, I think it'd be pretty cool. A lot of you guys are saying I need to do that. So. First round pick, there's no way we get a guy as good as Snuggerhead, especially if it's like 32 overall. We're also finding the Revings fourth round pick there in this year's draft. The value's on our side, we'll see what the Blues say. Trades rejected, uh, value isn't there whatsoever, I kind of figured. Honestly, I'd be willing to do like a first and a second. Uh, I think the Leafs are doing better than the Senators. So, first and a second here for Snuggerhead. They say no still. Okay, this might be kind of tough, guys. Um, we do have so many picks. One, two, and four for him. There we go. Okay, so a lot of picks to give up. Normally, I probably wouldn't, but look at all the picks we still have in this year's draft. And now, of course, we have that Minnesota line, which I think is very cool. And we're definitely, like, not only set for this year to make a cup run, but we're also set for the future, too. And actually, guys, I almost forgot, but I saw someone say I need to trade Lawson Kraus. Check out how he's playing this year. He's got 30 goals already at the deadline, uh, 48 points. Not bad at all. Like, the dude's crushing it. As well, too, defensively, I was looking around. Sefferson, 41 assists. He's actually even better than Goss Bears. So I feel like we'll definitely let him go after this season. Then we'll bring in Moser um, back to NHL. And I just noticed Moser's got an insane amount of value. Like more than Goss Bears and 81 high top six. That is interesting. And look at this, guys. Five minutes ago on the deadline, Minnesota Wild offering us Jared Spurgeon for Colby Barlow and Matthew Nyes. Trying to get a blockbuster done the last couple of minutes. I'm going to say no, though, again. I feel like our team's good enough to at least have a chance at the cup this year without, you know, mortgaging our future. So... Just gonna keep all of our prospects. We actually had the last trade there, getting Stuggerud. You got Dickinson there going to the Predators in exchange for Gudis. Our trade for Bordelo. Noel Gunler there actually goes to the Sharks. They got a couple, you know, solid sniper prospects with him and Lucius. Our trade for Patty Kane. Arvidsson in the Blue Jackets. Uh, the Blackhawks there get Cam Allen. Barbanov to the Golden Knights. They got Korschak back, who of course was offered to us. Uh, Matt Roy there to the Capitals. Zub to the Blues. Varlamov to the Kraken. That's actually it. So not a crazy trade deadline, I would say. Uh, we're definitely the most active team and. Probably made the biggest trade getting Patty Kane. All right, guys, so after the trade deadline, I'm gonna give you an update look at this team. I really do think we have a shot at the Stanley Cup, especially with how they've been playing this season. So first line there, we're not changing because they're performing so well. If it's not broke, don't fix it. They're getting a plus five still. Second line is now Patty Kane, Barrett, Hayton, Lawson, Krause. So I feel like, you know, Kane out of that line is gonna really boost them up. Third line obviously is even better now. You got Michelli dropping down, playing with Bordelo and Gunther. So kind of a young gun line there. Fourth line is actually the vet line. You got Jason Zucker, Paul Stastny, and Corey Perry. I feel like they should do a solid job in that role. Uh, in terms of the defense, again, no change. They've been playing well. Power play wise, we've added Patty Kane to the first unit. So, I mean, again, adding Patty Kane really shouldn't take away from anything. Uh, power play two now is just even better. I think Krause was on the first unit before, so should just help out the second. Four man there, second unit, you can see Patty Kane's on. Uh, PK wise, I think it's pretty much the exact same. Um, the only change would be poor lows now in the third unit as we've actually got Jack McBain scratched. Lowest rating at 79, that's pretty much the reason for it, but I would like him on the team in the future, so that's why I did not trade him away. AHL-wise, we got Matthew Nyes on that first line with Jimmy Snuggerud, his Minnesota teammate. I think after that, pretty much the exact same. So we'll see, you know, how those changes affect this team. I'm really hoping they can actually make a deep run here, especially since we just trade away a ton of picks. Kind of need them to.
All right, guys, rest of the season now with a record of 55, 21, and 6. 55 wins our first year in Houston, I'd say is pretty good. We actually finished with 116 points there, and that was good for the President's Trophy, which is pretty incredible. Our first year in Houston win the President's Trophy, and if you guys didn't know, the Arizona Coyotes have actually never won that, so kind of feel bad for the fans as soon as we relocate, win the President's Trophy for the first time, maybe even win our first Stanley Cup. So obviously, we'll have to wait and see, but, but so far, very, very happy with this inaugural season. Uh, Clayton Kelly there finished with 96 points, 82 games. Slightly worse actually than last year, but still a solid season overall. AHL wise, Carcon there, leading scorer 60 and 71. Unfortunately, the AHL team did not make the playoffs, only at 77 points. Again, a little bit surprising they didn't perform better, but um, luckily, AHL team, you know, taking on the President's Trophy. We're fine with AHL having a bit of a setback. So uh, behind Kelly here, you got Schmaltz 87, so also over a point per game. Terry Sanko there was close to 75. Same with Patty Kane with 70. Take a look and see on our team, over a point per game, 1918 there with 11 goals. Very happy with that. Uh, Severson, 65 points. Again, a huge year for him, plus 43. Um, hopefully, he'll like, continue to do that for us. He's definitely going to grow, I think, to like 86, 87 after that year. Um, Michelli there at 64. Kraus was one point shy with 34 goals. Uh, so we have like seven players there, basically 60 plus. Hayden there at 55. Gosses there at 54. So that's nine players there at 50 plus points. Like, come on. Gunther there at 41. Not too bad for his rookie season. Uh, Zucker even 34. Solid. Stassi 33. Again, uh, for limited ice time, very good. Bordelow there at 29. How do you do on our team? Four points, 18 games. What the heck? Um, hopefully, can do a little bit better for us than that, you know, in the coming seasons, especially, I think, if we give him some power play time. Goaltenders here, but Jamelka, 44 wins, 907 save percentage, 2.79 goals against, not bad at all. Aiden Hill's numbers were definitely not as good. AHL-wise, Ingram there, 907, 277. Again, really surprised this team didn't perform better. Uh, Stugger on there, 59 points. Okay, now how do you do with us? 13 and 17, cannot complain. Matthew Nyes at 50. Jenik was close to 50, same with Lysel. Moser there, 46. Pretty solid year for him, especially as a 2A defenseman. Kulichonik even had 40 points. So I guess, really, we just need kind of like more scores here in the AHL. Probably because most of our like good prospects are still lower rated. That makes sense. And in terms of the entire NHL here, guys, Jack Hughes taking home the Rush Trophy, 106 points. Followed there by Pasternak, Marchand, Ovechkin at 99 with 60 goals. Goudreau, Jesper Bratt, Crosby, Matthews. Keller though makes the first page. And yeah, Obi there, Marisha Shard. Line of the only couple goals behind him. He's up to an 88 there. For the Blue Jackets, gonna be very curious to see what it's like. Babcock coaching uh, Patrick Line, Johnny Coutreau. Um Car there leads defenseman in scoring 88 points. Pretty much, you know, always the case. You got Hamilton, Theodore, um, Severson made the first page. That is crazy. So again, huge year for him. He actually had potentially, yeah, he had the best plus minus of all defensemen. Like, come on, that's awesome to see. Goaltending wise, which Malka there had the most wins. Save percentage though goes to Huso for a starter, 926, and the best goals against for a starter is also gonna go to Huso, 246. Only 34 wins. The Vesna could go to a guy like Markstrom. A bit more wins there. Close numbers. Uh, rookie skaters here. Connor Bedard, 69 points. Nice. Probably taking home the Calder Trophy. Uh, Turcotte there. Finally makes the NHL, 54. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for Gunther there. He had 41 points. Still on that first page. Savkoski apparently got held out of the NHL last year by the Canadians. So this year was actually his rookie season. That's kind of interesting to see. And in terms of the entire league, guys, as I mentioned, we're taking on the President's Trophy there with 116 points. Like, how crazy is that? I did not expect this at all, honestly. I thought we might make the playoffs. Never did I think we were taking on the President's Trophy this season. Like, I truly didn't think this team was good enough. I still don't really think they were good enough to do that, but it happened. Uh, Blackhawks there finished last, so they're going to try and load up some more. Goals for, we were first in NHL, 289. That is awesome. Uh, goals against the Red Wings were first, 219. I um, actually don't see us, so... Um, I guess even though our defense was pretty good, could you know, improve that a bit? Hopefully, we're one of the worst teams. Okay, no, we we were like a middle team there in terms of goals against. So we know that Jamelka could potentially, you know, be upgraded. Same with the defense. But regardless, first seed in the league. We got home ice advantage throughout the entire playoffs. And let's see, in the first round here, um, good job. We sold out 29 games. Don't really care about that. We got the National Predators. Okay, so... I'll see what their team's looking like. They could have honestly um, made some decent changes. The first line there, guys, they got Philip Forsberg, Matthew Shane, Tyler Bertuzzi signed with the Preds, okay? They also got Ricardo Raquel there, playing with Thomas Tino's down 86, Evangelista, Trennan, Dickinson, Johansson, uh, Seasons there, Glass, Thomas Novak, up to an 83, but buried on the fourth line. Defensively, Yossi's down 94, uh, playing with Fabro there, Barry, Gavrikov they signed, Nemeth, Carrier. Goaltending wise, they got Sarah starting to 90, Lankin in there, still backing him up. So, Overall, it looks like a good team, you know, pretty similar to ours, but we had, what, I think 12 more wins in the regular season. There's got to be a reason for that. we got the home ice advantage. Let's see what happens here. First two games in Houston. <laughs> Unfortunately, we lose our first ever playoff game in Houston. That's all right. Can we win the second? We do. Okay, so we bounce back. We actually win that 3-0. Heading 
Head to Nashville now. And 5-1 loss. 5-2 wins. So we got a series here. Tied up to a piece. Game 5. Go home and lose 5-2. So we have to win the next two games here. Can we force game 7? And we lose in Nashville. So, I mean, I kind of expected this. Like, it was just luck, basically. We won the President's Trophy. And our team didn't really seem like a Stanley Cup winner. And so, as you know, EA loves to do. Win the President's Trophy out in the first round. And now the playoffs are complete, guys. The Carolina Hurricanes actually won the Stanley Cup. And the Stanley Goals didn't win the Calder. So, unfortunately, they didn't lose the eventual winner in Nashville. I think they actually got knocked out, like, round two by the Avs. Sharks, they're picking first overall. So, most likely, they'll be taking Mack and Celebrini. Second overall pick is Pittsburgh, jumping from 7-2. to two, And they're likely to take Cole Iserman. So, imagine him on a line with Crosby. That'd be pretty sick. Chicago there drops from 1-3. to three. I'll take a look next, of course, at all the awards. I don't know if we'll get anything other than the presidents, but you never know. Uh, Patty Kane, there was a point per game in the playoffs. Probably not bringing him back just due to his age. Um, you know, rather have that ice time for some younger players. Schmaltz had five. Kelly, though, slowed down quite a bit. 2.6 games. Uh, we needed more than that from the captain. Take a look here at Vegemelka's stats. 900, 318. Not the best, but also not terrible. I don't really think we can, like, pin our loss on him. So... Uh, let's see. The Hurricanes there swept the Islanders, beat the Capitals in six, Panthers in seven, so the exact same Eastern Conference final as real life this year, and then beat the Flames there in six. As I mentioned, the uh, Predators did get swept there round two by the Avs. And now look at the awards here. Of course, Kelly won the Stanley Cup. We get the President's Trophy, so pretty cool at least to get, you know, some hardware in our first season. Then, of course, you got the Flames, Francis Campbell, Kelly and Hurricanes, Prince of Wales. Individual trophies here, Jack Hughes got the Art Ross, Austin Matthews got the Hearts, Shea Theodore, James Norris, he must have had a much better plus minus than McCarr, uh, Jack Hughes got the Lady Bing, Connor Bedard of course got the Calder, Tara Vine and Con Smythe, Huso Vesna Trophy along with William Jennings, Connor Murphy who's now in Buffalo got the Bill Masterton, come on the Seattle coach got the Jack Adams, are you kidding me? Like we were literally a bottom team last year, we went and not only made the playoffs but we won the President's Trophy. This is the year that we should have won the Jack Adams. I feel like you just cannot win the Jack Adams in this game. Like, how do we not get it this season? Kopitar there almost got traded to us, and he actually won the Selkie. Matthews, Ted Lindsay, and then Ovechkin there, Maurice Richard. So, unfortunately, no individual awards. HL, maybe we'll get something. As I mentioned, Samuel Gulls there when they called their cup. Uh, Joachim Kamel, most points. Felino MVP, that's interesting. Uh, McKaig, most goals back-to-back -back years. Nazar there, actually, outstanding rookie. Uh, he's, of course, Blackhawks prospect. Regula, best defenseman. You know, that's looking good for the Blackhawks, even though they were dead last this year. Kane Primo, best goalie. Will Smith, MVP of the playoffs. Kamel there also got sportsmanship. I'm not sure if this guy's name is pronounced Didier or Didier, but community involvement for him. Kane Primo there, lowest goals again. So, again, President's Trophy will take it. I think it's a sign of, you know, good things to come for this team. Also, though, it's going to make it a lot harder for this rebuild. I think it's basically saying we got to just build with the players we already have. As like I showed you guys before, we do have already like a very good young group of players. I think we can use to build into a Stanley Cup contender. So at this point, it's just about them getting that growth and actually reaching their full potential. Now, look at the retired players here. Joe Thornton calls it quits at 44 years old. He's actually with the Calgary Flames AHL team. Mark Giordano there retires with the Leafs. I wonder what his rating was. Still 84, not bad at 40. Shea Weber was already LTI retired. Patrick Hornfist, Lou Cheech, Little there, Bozak. Marco de Vlasic, I think he does the Sharks a favor. We're saying overall, instead of a couple more years at 7 mil, uh, Jack Johnson, Jake Muzzin, Helm. So, again, most of these guys are kind of already essentially retired or on LTIR, like Carey Price there, Corey Schneider. So, uh, not a bad retirement year again, guys. We'll get to the draft next and got some decisions to make. No first round pick. Uh, got some guys, though, like Patty Kane. Maybe we could trade away their rights. Hopefully, too, we can find a new medium league goalie to replace one we trade away, but I'll take a look at this draft class here. So Macklin Celebrini is going first overall. How are scouts know nothing about him? I have no idea. Um, he's Canadian. Oh, you know what it is? It's because he's Canadian, but he's not playing in the CHL. So that is definitely why. Luckily, we still knew he's going first. Um, this made up guy, Karenin, going second. Okay. After him, you got Kaliserman, another made up guy, Marion Halinka going fourth. Then it's Berkeley Catton, uh, Constellinus, Aaron Kivaharju. He's at seven. Ivan Demidov there, Alex Zetterberg. Um, okay, so I mean, if we could make a trade, there's some guys to go for. I think Dickinson might be medium elite. We did have him, though, on the entire last franchise. Tanner Howe there, Adam Jerichek, Muse. Again, no first-round pick, no one, like, too crazy falling. Although, if this Enroth guy is medium elite, NHL ready, he could be worth uh, trading up for. And now, sorry my potential, guys, check this out. Jan Sorovi, guaranteed medium elite. He's going to go 30, so maybe he's the guy we trade for. As we know, we're for sure getting an elite player, although Enroth, like I said, I really do think could be elite as well. You also got Rasu here, probably medium late, gonna go 83. That's not bad. All right, guys, so I really want that prospect that's NHL ready, similar style to Backstrom, trying to trade for the Rangers. 16th overall pick here, which is on the block. 
offering Edmonton second round pick and our second round pick next year. Uh, if you guys didn't know, we have four second round picks next year. Again, um, Arizona just got so many picks back from trading guys away, taking bad contracts, things like that. Uh, we still have a second this year as well. So gonna make this trade and then try and get back in for like that 30 spot. They said no, the value though is quite fair. Um, we throw on like a fifth this year. There we go. Okay, so I'm really hoping that guy we want is still available. Send to pick 16. He is. Adam Jerichek actually just got taken at 15. Of course, David's brother, Tanner Howe there, Sam Dickinson, uh, Massey there, Caswell. 76 minimally 11 is actually such a good pick. Massenin at 10, Alex Zetterberg 9, Demidov, Kivaharju, Helenus, Catton. Halinka here at number four is a made up player. Eisman at three, the Blackhawks. And then the Penguins actually took this Karenin guy, another made up player. 84 overall, medium elite number two. So four overall higher than Celebrini, but only medium elite compared to high elite there. So I do think the Sharks probably got the better player, but this dude, 93 shot playing with Crosby, that's gonna be nuts to watch. Luckily, um, the guy I do want is still available, Enroth. Hopefully it's an absolute steal. And he is medium elite, 82 overall as well out of the draft. Are you kidding me? What a pick. Third eye zone ability, playmaker there. Come on, this guy looks like an absolute stud. And I'm trying to get back into the first round, guys, to get that other guaranteed meme league player. Offering up Ottawa second round pick this year, Maple Leaf second round pick next year. Jets there say yes. It is a late first, so, like, that's pretty fair value. I still can't believe that's got to be, like, one of the best trades I've ever made. Two seconds for an 82 medium elite. So, uh, send me to pick 26. The guy's ranking was, like, 30, but want to make sure we got him. Could take Anthony Cristoforo. Um, I know his medium elite potential plays for the Spitz. I uh, also got Zane Parekh there, who's a good uh, offense defensive for Saginaw. Morelli here, I know for a fact, is not medium elite, so definitely, you know, taking Sorovi. Medium elite defenseman from, I think, Germany. Only 64 overall, but still, wow, look at those X factors too. He's definitely gonna be a player for us in the future, I'm sure. And now next year, guys, we're trying to make a small trade. The Dallas Stars moving up nine spots in the third round to get this player I have pinned, offering a sixth round pick to make that happen. I actually just realized too, I don't know how it took me so long, but with the Coyotes moving from Arizona to Houston, it actually makes so much sense when you look at the divisions as they don't have to like change them up. Dallas is already in the central. It would make sense. Houston also is in the central. So I feel like it's gonna happen now. Like it just makes perfect sense. Dallas there accepting that trade. Yeah, that basically confirms it. So I will send to the third round here, guys. Make our pick. Like I said, I'm hoping there's a certain player. Yeah, so that Rasu guy, supposed to be medium elite, or at least there's a good chance. And he is medium elite. Wow. Three picks, three elite players so far. Only 57 overall, but for the third round, you take that all day. Also, guys, I was looking back at the first round, and after I picked there at 16, you had the Canucks taking Ponikarowski. 80 overall medium lead at 19. So another made up guy there. The Canucks get an absolute steal on. Um, I think that was pretty much it though. Vinny as well here, I should mention, going early second round the Sharks. 10 overall medium lead goalie. So they get him and Celebrini. Not a bad draft for them so far. And we now have another pick in the third round. I've honestly got nobody pinned because everybody's kind of like a crapshoot who's going to be good. Nicholas Brower is supposed to go around here. Could be elite. And he's medium top six. It's actually like not bad at all. And now guys, we're picking number 99. I feel like the 99th pick you got to hit on for uh, Gretzky. You got a medium fringe starter goalie. I mean, should we go for a goalie here? Uh, Radula could be elite. Let's look at their NHL ETA. They're probably all gonna be five years though. Um, Radula is the highest ranked from Finland. Come on. And are you kidding me? That was such a lucky pick. 59 overall medium elite. Let's go. The 99th pick never lets you down. We're actually picking 199 now in the seventh round. So we didn't have a fifth or a sixth or even a fourth, I don't think. Um, at this point, I mean, you got this finished defenseman, could be medium elite. Might as well just take a shot on him, Toivonen. in. Seventh D, I mean, that's all right. We actually have one more here. Again, these are all just wild card picks. Hoping for the best. I think I'm gonna take a stab on this goalie here. Miroslav Simic from Slovakia, could be medium starter. Medium backup, all right, what are you gonna do? So I think, you know, overall, we had a very, very solid draft. I actually just realized we didn't even trade away the rights to like Patty Kane, although, I mean, probably missed out on the seventh round pick. It is what it is. If we have the money, could bring him back. Um, obviously, too, like with that pick we just made, A2 overall, we actually gonna have probably some extra spots on this team. Now, Angel head coach, hopefully doesn't ask for too much money. We got about three million there to spend. Budget remaining 2655, right around what he's asking for. So hopefully like he'll say yes. We'll offer him like eight years here to have him as a head coach the rest of this thing. All right, guys, we're at the resign phase here with $43 million in cap space, which is just ridiculous. Um, Tarasenko there needs a new contract, wants to come back. Kane, though, does not. Tarasenko, of course, we chose over Kane last year in free agency. He wants 9 mil. Patty Kane wants 8. Um, obviously, we have to look at, like, the actual core of this team first. Make sure we get them locked up. Barrett Hayton here. 
4.8 million for two years, I think is very fair. But what do you want for like a long-term deal? Six million? Um, all right, let's try like four years, five million. Let's see if he says yes to that. Shane Gosper wants to come back. We don't really need him, especially at 6.7. I think, you know, we got Moser there. Uh, we'll probably just call him up instead. Jason Zucker wants to come back. He's a guy can probably just let go, I think, uh, especially with like the rookies we've drafted. But uh, speaking of Moser, he actually dropped in rating now only an 80. He wants 3.5 still, so we're going to qualify, play some hardball. Valimaki as well. His ask makes a lot more sense, but we'll just qualify for now. Uh, Kulichonik randomly grew to 82, so it looks like we're going to have some extra defensemen. Soderstrom there, still only 83. Luckily, though, Severson's now an 88, so uh, we got our number one defenseman in him. That growth was honestly huge. Soderstrom here, 4.3, and he's 23 years old, long term. I mean, I kind of like the long-term deal on him, honestly. I think he will kind of get good enough to make it worth it. See if he'll take five and a half for eight years. Just kind of hope he does grow. Kuliachonic, he's only asking for 800k as an 82, probably because he's in the AHL. That is a steal. Um, even him, long-term, he doesn't really ask for too much. I know a lot of people hate those deals. The Sarstrom one, I think, was pretty fair. Uh, for him, like, I don't know, he's 23. That's off from two and a half million for seven years. Sign to somewhere like some of those Nashville contracts. If he says yes, again, I think that's a steal. And again, you look at our D. Even without Gosses Bear coming back, we've got an extra guy. So Valimaki probably will be the player we trade. Just because most of younger with higher potential. And I look at the goaltending situation here, guys. With Malikov still under contract for one more year. Aiden Hill, honestly, didn't do great for us. So I wouldn't mind getting a better backup. Even potentially, if there's a really good start available, could sign them. And then have Vigmelka be the backup. Uh, these two unsigned goalies we don't need. I feel like Ingram and Prosvitov. They did find the AHL. And now back to forwards, since we kind of skipped over them after Barrett Hayton. Uh, like I mentioned, Zucker I don't see bringing back. Logan Cooley does need that contract now. So he's in the NHL. Um, Enroth as well, we just drafted a medium elite. He's got to have an NHL job. Uh, Stastny at 38, we'd probably let go. What does Bordelow want? Didn't have a great season. 1.5 for one year. Pretty fair. Uh, four years. He's still an RFA at that point. 2 million bucks. I think he'd be like a third liner for us. I don't mind that contract. Also too guys, I think we gotta bring Tarasenko back. Like that first line of Keller, Schmaltz, and him were just too good not to. So he's 32, I think till he's 35, three years, especially two. Uh, Cooley's contract will be up then. So we can just give Cooley his money. Um, three years, let's see if he does like 875. He does want to come back, so I think he'll take a slight pay cut. Patty Kane will wait on. Um, I think too, Paul Stastny was a solid fourth line center. I mean, one year, two million bucks. I don't mind bringing him back. Corey Perry, he's 39. Had a lot of penalty minutes. Did bring some grit, though. Uh, one year, 1.1. Could bring him back in a one year, 1 million. Worst case, you know, he's scratched. I don't know, maybe he's in the AHL or something. Liam Kirk, I know you guys like him just because he's from Britain, so I'll bring him back to the AHL team. Dauphin, there's 29 now, only 75. Didn't really go off last year, so I think we can let him go. Uh, Douglas Lutz, I'll sign both of them. I just noticed too, Vortex contract finally off the books. That was $8 million of just dead money. So it's pretty crazy Like when you look at it. We won the President's Trophy last year. I think we were like $7 million under the cap up to the trade deadline. As well, we had, again, $8 million Vortex dead money. I think Brown in the AHL had like $2 million. So probably like close to $20 million bucks under the cap won the President's Trophy. If we actually were spending that money, like who knows what could have happened. And there we go, guys. Our NHL head coach said yes to the new contract. Again, sign up for eight years. So I don't have to worry about losing him. If we do continue to play well, he should grow from like an A- minus to an A, A-plus head coach. Um, got some scouts back. Paul Snassi's returning. Let's see. Tarasenko as well. Um, O'Brien there for the AHL. Barrett Hayden wants more money. Uh, Soderstrom said yes. That was a long-term deal. Perry on the one year. Bordelo said yes. That was like a four-year deal. I think good contract for us. Uh, Kuliachonik said yes. That was another long-term contract. Liam Kirk there. Kesterlein. Enroth, of course, the rookie we just took. Langlo there, AHL. Same with Lutz. Cooley, uh, he'll be a big part of this team. So, still have $27 million in cap space. Um, Hayton and Kane to re-sign. That's not bad at all. Um, Hayton, if he just wants the bridge, I'm fine with it. Uh, let's see. There would still be an RFA at that point. So, let's do a two-year, 475. And there we go. Hayton did say yes. So, at this point, $23 million in cap space still. And we only have Patrick Kane to re-sign. Like, that's crazy. And honestly, guys, looking at our forward group, I feel like we already have, like, a solid top 12. So, rather than Patrick Kane take some ice time away from one of our young players, I'm just going to let him go to free agency. Again, we probably missed out on like a seventh round pick there at the draft, but that's okay. Uh, Jason Zucker as well. Just don't really have a spot for him. I think defensively though, that's probably where we'll splash some cash. We got Severson. I'm gonna let go of Goss Spare. I think we could probably bring in somebody high 80s, low 90s to play with Severson on the top pair. But then I got Graves, Sarstrom, solid second, Kulichonik, and then either Coglin or Moser or Valimaki on the bottom. Like 
tons of options there. And then of course two could bring in an elite starting goalie. And so we're down for AC here, guys. I'm very curious to see who's available because we got so much money to spend. Oh my god, we have to. We have to do this. Are you kidding me? Austin Matthews is available. Arizona Coyotes, come on home. I don't really know where he's gonna play in our forward group. We'll probably have to trade someone away, but yeah, uh, this is the time to sign Austin Matthews. Haven't signed him in a long time. Seven years, we're gonna offer him 15 million. Austin Matthews, I'm almost doing this entirely too, just to annoy Leafs fans. I guess, would he sign though? Cause we're actually no longer in Arizona, which is where he's from, we're in Houston. I mean, it's the same franchise though. He like grew up liking. It's Texas. I'm doing it either way. 15 million Austin Matthews. Let's go. Um, behind him, you got Elijah Lindholm there. Kent Johnson, of course, in RFA. William Nylander. The Leafs, what the heck's happening? They're losing their guys. Patrick Kane. Tyson Berry. Um, Gossesburg is actually one of the best defensemen available. I was hoping for some better players. Brandon Montour, though. 85 overall. Obviously having a great season right now with the Panthers. Thing is, 7.5 million for him is so steep. Tyson Berry there wants 8.7. He's a very good offensive defenseman, so... You know, could play like power play too. I don't know though. I was really hoping for like kind of a, honestly, Noah Hannafin would be kind of more what I was looking for. Have him and Severson on the top pair. Wouldn't be too bad. Only had 25 points last year, but honestly, I think Severson showed he can put up the points. That would be a very good top pairing. Money makes sense too. Two other teams interested. Let's try six and a half for six years. So at that point, I mean, Matthew's making 15. We're pretty much done actually in terms of our spending, but... Um, I do plan on probably trading away um, a few players if both those contracts are accepted. Goalie-wise, is there no elite available? There isn't. Okay, so yeah, we're not going to sign Varlamov's 85. We already got Vegemelk 84. We do need a backup, though. Scott Wedgwood wants to leave Miz 82. Matt Murray, Jonathan Quick. Um, okay, so I feel like, you know, Murray and Quick have both won cups. Murray's only 30. 909 last year. Quick, ooh, not great numbers. So... Probably looking at Matt Murray here, one year, uh, 800K, be our backup, not a bad contract at all. And now looking at two-way players here in terms of goalies, Salmonen 2477 isn't bad, but not really much better than the guys we've got. Lennon though, 1970 medium starter, uh, second round pick by the Buffalo Sabres. I don't understand why they would let him go. I'll definitely sign him like for free just to add another goalie prospect. Of course, we drafted like the medium elite guy, but can never have too many. Now looking at two-way skaters here, there's not a single medium top six forwards. That's actually good to see. Looks like teams are starting to sign their guys. Um, Caden Korschak here, 23.74. He was literally offered to us. And the more I look at it here, he's actually looking like he might be a bust. We'll sign him here. Hopefully he pans out. If not, he's just like an AHL defenseman. Axel Anderson, kind of the same thing, 24.78. He actually should end up being decent. Do like 900K there for two years. We actually do need some HL defenseman as well. Now, Jack Drury here, I'm surprised Carolina didn't keep. 24 years old, 79 overall, medium top nine potential. I think that's the HL last year, pretty good points. Time on Heist 22 22 is pretty funny. Like, look at his stats defensively, 95 faceoffs. I think he's got a good faceoff ratings, but it wasn't that high, so it definitely went up a bit. I mean, even if he's only in the AHL, he's kind of like the perfect third line sort of player. Let's do two years, like 900K. I think he'd be a good addition to the team, even just, you know, future fourth liner. Cole Schwint here as well, 23 years old, 10 overall. He, of course, was actually part of the Matthew Kachuk trade. So three years, he's still in RFA, do 900K. Just another guy who could turn out to be a decent player. And now next year, you guys are trying to send Valimaki back to the Flames for a fifth round pick. If you guys don't know, the Cowboys actually kind of stole Valimaki from the Flames off of waivers. So they say yes to this, and they do. Okay, so a free fifth rounder, because as I mentioned, uh, Val and Mac, you're just not making our top six next year. Now we got to wait to hear back from Matthew, see what he says. Um, Stastny in a fourth for a third and a fourth, so basically Stastny for a third. I mean, he's a guy like we might have to trade, actually, if Matthews does say yes. We'll have an extra NHL forward. Jack Drury there, so that's just big help to the HL team. Matt Murray, we got our backup. King Korzak, again, HL defenseman. Same with Axel Anderson. Cole Schwint there. Uh, Lennon decided to go with the Canucks. That's okay. We're just trying to get an extra prospect goalie. Boston Bruins offering us a second there for Stastny a fourth and a fifth. I mean, that is a good offer. I actually kind of got to think about this one because Stastny, he had decent production last year. He was a minus five though. Again, the 91 faceoffs I love. Low physical though. Not a great skater. Uh, we actually have Jack McBain still in the AHL too. He could call up. We miss out on Matthews. Um, you know what? That is a good offer. I'm going to say yes here to the Bruins. We get a second round pick. Um, hopefully, you know, Stassi's not too upset with us. They did just win the Stanley Cup a couple years ago. And look at that. Noah Hannafin there does sign. So I'm thinking him and Severson will be our top pair. Austin Matthews as well joins the Houston Coyotes. Hopefully that $15 million contract doesn't, you know, come to bite us in the butt later on. But I feel like it'll be okay just because 
we do have, you know, so much money to work with. Again, I made sure Tarasenko's contract was done by the time we had to pay Logan Cooley. And a lot of the other guys too, you know, are signed pretty cheaply for long term. So uh, worst case, we can trade somebody like a Ryan Graves, for instance, before you gotta worry about, you know, losing Austin Matthews. Also too, when a 96 overall player becomes available, you gotta take him. And I was just looking at Austin Matthews stats again, guys. If you forgot, he had 55 goals last year and 98 points. He was also a plus 48, which is why he won the Hart Trophy. I think too, him and Clayton Keller might've actually played together on like one of the US development program teams. So definitely gotta reunite them again. Matthews there got the Hart. He also got the Ted Lindsay. The fact that Leafs let this guy go, I can't believe it. And I know you guys are making a small trade to Washington Capitals to get Andrew Gibson. He's actually a prospect in this year's entry draft. As you can see, the Capitals got in the second round of 2023. 64 overall there, medium toxic potential. Main reason I'm honestly trained for him though is because he's from Windsor and I was at a Spitz game. Somebody told me I needed to draft him. I totally forgot. So I'm going to make up for that now by trading for him, offering up the third round pick we actually got back for Gossip Spares. So basically getting Gibson for free here. And they do say yes. Hopefully it can actually uh, end up being a player for us in the future. And now next year, guys, I'm potentially fleecing the Jets again. But you know what? There's probably some bitterness between these two franchises. Of course, back in the day, the Winnipeg Jets became the Arizona Coyotes. So I'm trying to get Brian Yeager from them, who's on the block. Obviously a top prospect, 13th overall, 2023. And I'm offering up JJ Moser, who again, was in the AHL for us. He wants like three and a half million. Doesn't really make sense to pay him that. And somehow, high top 60 potential, his value is about equal to Yeager. So I'm just going to take advantage of that. And I think this just goes through one for one. Yeah, okay, so I don't know how Moser's value was that high, why Jaeger's on the block for the Jets, but uh, when you see that kind of trade, you gotta take advantage. So um, just add him to like one of our prospects, probably goes back to Junior. Uh, just like Geeky, just like Barlow. But yeah, this team's future is looking so, so bright. All right, guys, we're on the start of next season. Had to make some tough decisions with the roster this year, but I feel like we got the best chance to win the cup with this lineup. So as you guys can see here, we got Clayton Keller, Austin Matthews, Tarasenko on the first line getting a plus five. We also get plus five in the second line there with Schmaltz, Cooley, and Gunther. Uh, both Gunther and Cooley are now 85 overall. So hopefully they'll play well, especially Cooley's rookie year in that top six. Third line, that's like the OG Arizona Coyotes line. You got Michelli. Peyton and Kraus. Obviously, Kraus had over 30 goals last year. Michelli almost 50 assists. That should be one of the better third lines in hockey. Fourth line here, Corey Perry, Jack Jury, and Thomas Bordalo. Ideally, Bordalo is not in our fourth line, but we just have like too many good players in front of him. So I feel like, you know, he needs to be in the NHL. Hopefully get some PK time or whatever. Uh, Perry, of course, is a pest. Jury, of course, nice six face as I showed you guys. So I feel like that should be a solid fourth line. Now, defensively here, Hannafin Severson's our top pair. They get a plus one. Starstrom's down 85. Playing with Chloe Chonic on the second line is up to an 83. We then have Graves and Cogley on the bottom pair. They get a plus two. Goaltenders here, Mitch Malka starting. Murray backing them up. Again, look at the NHL team. Like, they should be a playoff team for sure. Um, AHL-wise, Ingram, Prospetov, Slur, two goalies. Now, this first forward line is so sick. Matthew Nyes is down 81. Enroth and Snuggerud. Like, are you kidding me? Um, Enroth essentially replacing Logan Cooley there for the Minnesota line. A2 overall, when we look at the NHL team, kind of like Bordelow, he's not making like the first three forward lines, at which point I think it just makes sense, especially because he's on his entry level deal. Bury him in the AHL, that should give us one extra year on that entry level, help us with the salary cap in the future. Uh, second line even, Lysel, Geeky, McBain is nasty, uh, Carcon, Janik, Doan, Schwint, Kirk, McCartney, like, AHL just has so much depth. Uh, defensively here, Yolevi, Lamru now in the AHL. Anderson, Santa Polik on the second pair. Kesselin, Korschak. I even looked like scratched. We got a lot of guys. Douglas there. Lutz, Alvin Grew. So um, definitely a lot to look forward to with this team. Like we just have so much depth. I'm thinking too, if anything, we may make a big time trade uh, forward for a defenseman because defense is definitely kind of our weak spot as well as goaltending. But like I'm not, you know, too concerned with the goaltending as it doesn't affect the sim as much. Uh, Cap C wise decided to take away the A from Schmaltz. Give it to Matthew. I feel like Schmaltz only won the A for one year. He would understand. Now Kelly there slowing the C and Kraus there slowing right in the other A. And then finally here guys, I'll just show you our ratings heading into the third season. Again, I think this team, especially if they won the President's Trophy last year, they've only gotten better like in terms of every single position. So uh, we'll see what happens here. As you guys can see, we've got 97 offense, 95 defense, and 84 goaltending. So excited to see what this team can do next season. But that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.